The German ground forces were hard pressed by the Allied ground attack aircraft during the second half of World War II. The Panzer and Sturm artillery units were hit especially hard by these attacks. Towards the end of the war, the Panzer branch of the army came up with a temporary solution in the form of the Flak Panzer series based on the Panzer IV. The Sturm artillery, the assault artillery, equipped with Stug Fries based on the Panzer III, also asked for Flak Panzers for their own protection. As they were unable to acquire these vehicles, a possible solution was to simply develop and build a Flak Panzer based on the Panzer III chassis. While small numbers were built, they were simply too late to have any real effect on the war's outcome. Sadly, beside a few drawings, there are no known surviving photographs of this vehicle. Welcome to a new Tank Encyclopedia voice article. I'm your host, Stan, and if you like our content, with my face on it or not, please do consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. You can find links in the description. All of the funds from you go towards funding Tank Encyclopedia and mostly the illustrations you can find with every one of our articles. Everything else, hundreds of articles, have a lot of beautiful illustrations on our website and it's mostly thanks to our patrons and our donors. So do become one of them, every little bit counts. By 1943, it had become apparent that the Luftwaffe was losing control of the skies, which left the German ground forces severely exposed. The armored formations were often the main focus of the Allied ground attack aircraft operations, and while the Germans employed a number of anti-aircraft vehicles based on half-tracks, such as the SDKFZ 10-4, 6-2, 7-1, etc., and some on truck chassis. These had very limited or no armor, and thus they were vulnerable to enemy fire either from the ground or from the air. To provide adequate armed and armored anti-aircraft vehicles, the Panzer units were equipped with several Flak Panzer types built using different tank chassis, ranging from the old Panzer I, the Panzer 38T, and up to the Panzer IV. The Panzer IV-based anti-aircraft vehicles, the Mobilwagen, the Wirbelwind, and the Ostwind, proved to be most effective but were introduced for service too late into the war. Inspectorate 4, the Inspectorate for the Artillery Branch, wanted a similar vehicle for their own assault artillery units. To facilitate the production of spare parts and the maintenance, the new vehicle should have been based on the Panzer III chassis, the same the Stug III was using. For this reason, in October 1944, a military delegation was dispatched to Deutsche Eisenwerke in Duisburg to inspect the available anti-aircraft turret designs. For the planned Flak Panzer III production, in November 1944, Inspectorate 4 managed to obtain a monthly delivery of 30 Stug III chassis. In addition, some 90 Panzer III superstructures were also allocated for this project. In December 1944, Regierungsbaurat Becker was dispatched to the Obstbau Sagan factory, where the Ostwind and Verbalwind turrets were being built. Becker proposed to modify the Ostwind and Verbalwind turrets so that these would be able to fit to the smaller diameter of the Panzer III turret ring. The Obstbau officials simply rejected the proposal, not willing to engage in this project as well. It is possible that the Obstbau officials were influenced by the Panzer branch, which had, to say the least, a tense relationship with the assault artillery branch. The Panzerwaffe actually stole quite a couple of projects from the Sturm artillery, uh, not counting the Jagdpanzer IV, the Ferdinand, the Jagdpanther, and the Jagdtiger. These tensions had been raging since even before the war had actually started. Another simpler explanation was that Osbau Sagan simply lacked production capabilities and was barely managing to keep up with Flak Panzer IV turret production as it was. Nevertheless, not willing to admit defeat, Inspectorate IV initiated development of the Assault Artillery Unit's own Flak Panzer project. For the main base for construction of such vehicles, the Sturmgeschutzschule at Bergen was chosen. In early 1945, Deutsche Röhrenwerke delivered a Ostwind turret with an enclosed floor. 
Depending on the source, a verbal vent turret might have been allocated for this project. Additionally, two 3.7cm Flak 43 and two 2cm Flak Fearling 38 anti-aircraft guns, along with two Panzer III chassis, were also acquired. The two prototypes were successfully completed and tested by March 1945. While testing the Ostwin turret, the Bergen engineers noted that, beside the standard 3.7cm Flak 43, the installation of a 2cm Flak Fearling 38 could be done without any major problems. In early March 1945, the Heereswaffenamt gave permission to allocate some 18 Ostwind turrets from Ostbau Sagan stocks to the Flak Panzer III project. An additional 72 turrets were yet to be built. Due to its late and unofficial introduction into service, it is unknown if this vehicle ever received any official name. In the well-known books Panzer Tracts issue 12-1, Flak Panzer Kampfwagen 4 and other Flak Panzer projects, this vehicle is named the 3.7cm Flak 43 in Kexdose Turm auf Panzerkampfwagen 3 Fahrgestell. However, a quite common short name is, well, Flak Panzer 3. This video has and will continue to use this designation for the sake of simplicity and for my own mental sanity. While Inspectorate 4 requested 90 Oswin turrets, only around 18, although the precise number is not actually known, were actually delivered. The Flak Panzer III project would reach a quick end, as it was in essence cancelled by Albert Speer's Emergency Armament Production Program. This decision also encompassed the previously mentioned 18 turrets. Nevertheless, the commanding general of the artillery, who was part of the German Army General Staff, urged for the completion of at least these 18 vehicles. He also requested a special permission to build the remaining 72 turrets at a production rate of 12 per month, so 6 months. Due to the deteriorating war situation, his requests were rejected. Now, despite this rejection, the Sturmgeschutzschule at Bergen managed to build a small number of Flak Panzer III's. If these were all armed with a 3.7cm or some were armed with the 2cm anti-aircraft guns is unknown. Sadly, there is little to no information about the precise technical characteristics of the Flak Panzer III. A number of educated guesses can be made based on the similarities to the Panzer IV-based Ostwind project. The Flak Panzer III was to be built using a combination of Stug III chassis and Panzer III superstructures. Which precise version of both was to be used is not known. The use of repaired vehicles returned from the front or even training vehicles would have been possible by the desperate Germans in 1944 and 1945. While the modification of less combat-worthy Panzer III's may at first seem like a good idea, the production of this tank was discontinued in 1943, thus limiting the potential large-scale production of such vehicles. The engine was the Maybach HL120TRM that produced 265 horsepower at 2600 RPM. With the removal of the original turret and its replacement with a new one, the weight was probably around 20 to 21 tons. This is at best just a guess as there's no information about it. This meant that the overall speed would not be changed much being around 40 km per hour. The operational range would also remain the same at 155 km. The Panzer III superstructure was probably unchanged. The driver's front observation hatch and the ball-mounted hull machine gun were possibly kept as well. The most obvious place that would see a necessary modification were the Panzer III's interior and turret ring. In order to make a stable firing platform for the new turret, two or more metal beams were welded inside the Panzer III's hull, probably more or less a direct copy from the Ostwind construction. How the engineers at the Bergen Assault Gun School placed the Ostwind turret with its larger diameter on the smaller diameter Panzer III turret ring is unknown. While both the Ostwind and Verbalwind turrets were tested on the prototypes, Inspectorate 4 officials decided to use the Ostwind turret for the Flak Panzer III. The Ostwind turret was also known by the humorous Keksdoser, cookie tin nickname. 
It had a simple design constructed by using 12 larger armored plates welded together. The turret was open topped which provided a good all round view but offered no top protection. While initially there were plans to partly cover the top, due to a lack of resources and in order to avoid production delays, this was never implemented under regular Flak Panzer IVs. The overall armor thickness of the third plates was only 16mm, which provided protection from small arms fire and shrapnel only. The Ostwin turret also had an additional pyramid shaped sheet of armor welded to the lower front armor. Its purpose was to provide additional protection against any possible ricochets from small caliber rounds in the direction of the vehicle's hull. The Flak Panzer III's Travis turret mechanism was probably taken directly from the Ostwind. This was in general a simple mechanism using a steering rod to connect the Flak 43 traversing mechanism to the Panzer III turret ring. This allowed the crew to move the turret by using the main gun's Travis wheels. The armored shield wall's construction was placed on a ring-shaped turret base welded atop the hull, with added ball bearings to help with the rotation. If any additional modifications were made to the Flak Panzer III is unknown due to a lack of information. The main weapon used was the 3.7cm Flak 43 built by Rheinmetall Borsig. It had a new gas operated breech mechanism which was loaded with a fixed loading tray with 8 round clips. In order to be installed in the new Ostwind turret, some modifications were needed. The lower part of the carriage and the original gun shield were thrown away completely. In addition, the spent ammunition basket was smaller because it had to fit in the turret. Only the small rectangular shield in front of the gun was left in order to cover the front embrasure opening. The Flak 43 could rotate a full 360 degrees with a range of gun elevation from minus 10 to 90 degrees. The maximum rate of fire was 250 to 300 rounds per minute, but 150 to 180 was the more practical one. It is not clear but it is estimated that between 400 to 1000 rounds of spare ammunition were carried inside the vehicle. With a muzzle velocity of 820 meters per second, the maximum effective ceiling of the gun was 4800 meters, although usually firing was not done at those ranges. The upper right front armor plate had a small hatch that could be opened to allow the gunner to see and engage ground targets. The Flak Panzer III's crew would most likely have consisted of a commander, one or two gunners, a loader, a radio operator and a driver. The driver and radio operator were placed in the vehicle hull with the remaining crew positioned in the new, well, quite cramped turret. The few constructed Flak Panzer III's were actually rushed into combat. The following Sturmgeschutzbrigades were known to have operated some Flak Panzer III's. In mid-March 1945, Sturmgeschutz Brigade 224 had two vehicles, one of which was operational, while Sturmgeschutz Brigade 341 had three vehicles of which two were operational. The last unit to be equipped with Flak Panzer III's was Sturmgeschutz Brigade 667, which had two operational vehicles out of four. All Flak Panzer III's saw service in the West by the end of the war. Whether they were actually used in combat or their performance are sadly unknown. Drawing a proper conclusion about the Flak Panzer III is almost impossible due to a lack of information and photographs. The use of the cheaper Panzer III chassis had some merits. The much needed Panzer IV could instead be used for tanks and even in the anti-tank configurations. In the end, while potentially a good idea, by the time it was implemented, it was simply too late to have any real impact on the war's development. Well, this was our video, thank you for watching. What do you think about the Flak Panzer III? Would it have been useful if it was implemented earlier? Also, do you think we made any mistakes in our suppositions about how this vehicle would have looked and been built? If you like our content, please do be sure to check out our website. We have a lot of articles over there that you will absolutely love. And also some of the articles that we make, we do not actually make into video form. So do check that out. We publish four times a week.